Welcome to the Sharkpreneur Podcast with Kevin Harrington and Seth Green. Kevin Harrington is the inventor of the infomercial, one of the original sharks from the hit TV show Shark Tank, and has generated over $5 billion in TV and digital direct response sales. Seth Green is the world's first trusted authority on cutting edge direct response marketing, a best selling author, and the only three time Marketer of the Year nominee. On the podcast, Kevin and Seth interview sharkpreneurs who share straight talk on what it takes to explode your business. Why do so many businesses struggle while others seem to explode overnight? Do you wish you had the secret to this type of exponential growth? Now, I've scaled more than 20 businesses to over $100 million, and it's not just luck. In my new book with Mark Tim, Mentor to Millions, you'll learn the repeatable framework I use in all my business ventures for massive success. Order at KevinMentor.com and get over $1,000 in bonuses. Head to KevinMentor.com. Welcome to the show business edition of the Sharkpreneur Podcast. This is your co-host, Seth Green, here with Robbie Simpson. Robbie, thanks so much for joining us. Seth, so so happy to be seeing you and chatting with you. Thanks so much for having me. All right, my pleasure. Let's go back in time a little bit. We 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 have a little. We share our our original undergraduate education in common. So tell everybody kind of how that started, and then how you got to what you're doing now. Yeah, so I I grew up in Western Massachusetts, which was really cool because I'm by the Berkshires. There's lots of theater, lots of live theater, professional theater. Started doing that when I was a kid, getting paid to do it, which was super Even better. Cool time. Um, so then I, it was pretty much um, an obvious choice to go to school for theater, to go get my BFA in acting. And after looking at tons of schools, I landed on Syracuse. I loved it. It has a you know, national reputation. It's connected to a major regional theater. And uh, I also love that you know it's still a college too. So you, you get all of that as well. So... Um, I graduated and and moved to New York, like most people from the program do. Awesome! So you went to New York to be an actor, and how did that how did that process go? So yeah, so I moved to New York right after that, uh, and that first year was good. You know, I had an agent that I had gotten from doing a little off Broadway play, and went and did a show at Berkshire Theater Festival and in Rhode Island, just like popped around in and out of the city for that year. But I was quickly, you know, looking to the left and looking to the right of me at, you know, the guys that were my age and what they were doing, what they had that I didn't have. And I really wanted to be doing, um, you know, edgy off-Broadway material. I wanted to do Shakespeare. I wanted to do television. And really all the guys that looked like me and, um, you know, were getting those jobs and that I was auditioning with, they had MFAs in acting. And that's pretty much, I'd say, in the last 10 years become a huge standard, not so much for musical theater, but for straight theater, plays, acting, television. So I went to the University of San Diego and got my MFA in acting. Sight unseen, I had never been to San Diego or Southern California. I've now fallen in love with it. I bet. I thought Big a lot difference of it- from the Syracuse, Massachusetts winters. Yeah, I always tell people at Syracuse it snowed every day. Actually, it has snowed every day. It just was a question of how much it was going to snow and it was freezing and they never canceled school. So, you know, we really were hiking, you know, through snow. I remember. remember. Yep. So when it came to grad school, um, you know, I I wasn't totally set on going to California, but the weather was not bad, you know, 77 degrees every day, beautiful, memorizing Shakespeare and studying on the beach was not a bad way to, to spend grad school. Yep, I bet. So I get back to the city and I ended up signing with um, new agents and they were exactly the agents that I wanted to sign with. My grad program does a big showcase. I got my agents through that showcase. And really, I just knew exactly that I wanted to be signed with them because of the talent that they had, people that I knew, actors that I had worked with, actors I saw on television and on Broadway. That agency just had that same taste level that I felt like I had. And and loved it and then hit the ground running running from there and then since then it's just been a smattering of all different things i did um original cast of two long running off broadway shows it was really cool in the city one was called afterglow the other was recent closed because of the pandemic back in march it was called paradise lost 
and a bunch of regional theater at St. Louis, back to San Diego, Cape Cod, New Hampshire, kind of, you know, everywhere and a few television shows. And, um, and, and so it's been, it's been really good. I've been, can't complain. I've been happy. You know, I'm always left wanting more, reaching for more. And this kind of pause in our industry has definitely been good for me to kind of reset my mind, my priorities, learn, learn a little bit about patience um, and kind of working on myself and my craft and my relationships within the business from inside a, from, from inside a socially distant house and room. So it's been an interesting challenge, but. Got it. So how does that work? I mean, you're not in, how do you be, how do you work as an actor when there's COVID? How has that changed for you? I know you mentioned the pause, but how are you continuing to do that? Yeah. So right away when the pandemic started, I think, you know, this is not just the theater community. I think everyone in the world was like, you know, we're go, go, go people. You know, they, how, how can I keep doing my job? How can I keep, you know, moving my career forward? How can I have this not be such a pause or not waste time? So a lot of people started doing online content, streaming content, working on new plays, new musicals. It's kind of been a, you know, a hibernating uh, time for the creation of new work. I think on the other side of this, you're going to see hopefully another Hamilton, you know, like I think you're going to see some great movies, pop music, plays, lots of stuff coming out of this time. So what that means is those people that are creating need actors to work on the shows. So I've been a part of developing a few new plays that hopefully will happen on the other side of this that will get produced. Um, yeah, so that's that's really been keeping me kind of busy. And then television really started again, you know, at the end of the summer in September. So since September, the self-tape audition game has gotten really big, really intense. Television shows have found wonderful ways of safe, working safely on set. Um, so that's kept me busy. And I shot a commercial during this time. But the big thing that's kept me really busy is I started a podcast. Um, Yes, with, the breakdown with Robbie. Tell us about that. Yeah, so I, I actually started it two years ago. I started recording these conversations, but a side hustle for me in between these gigs is being a reader in auditions. So uh, for people that don't know what that is, uh, um, when you come in an audition for a play or, you know, say, Seth, you're coming into audition for, you know, um, streetcar named desire or something so you're going to read your audition scenes with me usually the casting director or the producers hire an actor to come in you know i think in the past it had been casting directors or interns that were readers but now there's been a big shift to let's have actors do their best work and actors do their best work when they are listening and responding to another actor so i kind of made that a side job i was working for several theaters and casting directors and tv networks as a reader which in and of itself is a great networking opportunity. You learn so much about auditioning, but I was really hearing all these insider conversations, things about the business that I had no idea about. And I have two degrees in theater and neither one of these programs kind of prepared me for the business side of what we do every day. You know, um, they prepare you to, from that first day of rehearsal or that first day on set to be able to do your job. But, a lot of training programs don't really prepare their students for the hustle of the grind in the business and how to get an agent, how to maintain an agent, how to create and maintain relationships with casting directors, which are arguably more important. How do you find, how do you network? You know, that word is such a scary, huge word in every industry, but specifically in theater, it can feel gratuitous. It can feel self-serving. So, you know, really all these huge, important topics, usually it's, People just learn the hard way or they learn 15 years into the business. So I was hearing these conversations and thought every actor <laughs> needs to hear this. And not every, not even actors. I'm talking professors. I want to listen to these, to these conversations that I've been having because it can better prepare their students for today. And, you know, family members or friends or fans of the industry. So I started recording these conversations with high profile casting directors, agents, managers, producers, artistic directors, uh, some high profile actors that I think have something to say about the business side of what we do, you know, sharing their experience with it. But really for me, it's highlighting 
the thing you don't hear or see every day. A lot of these people that I have on my podcast, you can't really hear from them on any other podcast. The way you access this important information and this business knowledge previous to the pandemic were, you know, they're called quote unquote pay to plays. You pay to meet a casting director and then they tell you, you know, how, how they like people to come in for their auditions or advice on self tapes and you get to meet them, but you have to pay a few hundred dollars for these sessions. So for me, it became quickly about leveling the, you know, leveling the playing field for everyone. So everyone has an opportunity and access to this information, regardless of whether you can pay a few hundred dollars for these classes, which let's be honest, a lot of actors can't even afford that in normal times. So now it's even worse, you know, it's even harder. So it's been, it's been pretty in a pretty incredible ride and, and it keeps unfolding in new and different ways. And now there's a few spinoffs I'm doing with the podcast. So it's been, um, it's been really cool in a way for me to stay artistic during this time as well. You know, editing, working on the social, the branding, kind of uh, all that stuff also um, jazzes me and gets me excited. How are you getting, other than let's say your own agents that you have a relationship with or the folks that you're being a reader for, how are you getting those folks to be on your show? Yeah, so I, I started with the people that I either know and, you know, curating guests for the podcast, as you know, it's, it's important. You want to have dynamic, interesting people, people that have something to say, people that people want to listen to. So I started with the people that I knew that were nominated for Tony Awards or were casting big Broadway shows or casting television. You know, I keep thinking about it from the point of view of, I am the number one consumer of the podcast. Like I'm the biggest fan of it. Who do I want to listen to? What stories do I want to hear? What advice about the business do I want to know? And who do I want to hear it from? So I did start with people I knew, acquaintances, asking them to do it. And then once you have, once I had a, you know, a pretty reputable um, group, then I would just start reaching out to people I've maybe met once or reaching out to people via their social channels and, you know, just asking them and, and people started saying yes. And then I got a few more, you know, bigger names on my roster. And then, you know, if you can get a hold of someone's email in this business and you can just, you know, send a few sentence email, some of the best advice I ever got was, you know, you can cold email anyone, just a few sentences, get right to the point. Um, and you know, it's not how you, what you say, it's how you say it. So I've been really fortunate to have some really wonderful people say yes, which then begets more wonderful people to say yes. And, you know, kind of once you have those, some big names in the business, um, my, my 20th episode I did with an, um, a director and actor named Joe Mantello. He's, if you don't know his name, he was just in the Ryan Murphy Hollywood. He directed the Boy, Boys in the Band on Netflix and literally 30 Broadway shows. So kind of once I got him on the podcast, um, so many other people have, have come along and I've gotten the confidence to, to ask other people. So it's kind of a mix of different things and it keeps evolving as I keep you know, building my roster, which is, which is fun. What are some of the biggest lessons you've learned from the folks you've interviewed? Man, that is a good, that is a good question. Some of the biggest things I've learned is, and the conversations I've been having recently is that there is a human on every side of the interaction you have in this business. So this, this doesn't even go for theater, but I've been learning, you know, you're writing an email, you're writing a business email, you're writing an email to someone who you respect, who you admire, and maybe you're asking something for them, either their time or an interview. And, um, you can be human about it. You can, we're in a pandemic. You can say, I hope you are healthy and safe and your family is, and you know, I, I'm kind of doing this thing and, and why you're doing it and bringing a piece of myself into, into the email, but bringing more of myself into my television auditions, bringing more of myself into my theater auditions. That's really what people want to see. They don't want to see your technique. They don't want to see the craft. They don't want to see how smart you are. They want to see you interpret material in a way that can only be interpreted by you because you're bringing your unique self to it and kind of not being afraid to share that. And that goes for auditions. It goes for <laughs> being just a human being, meeting new people um, and, and certainly for writing emails. So I think I've gotten my confidence up about, about that idea. That's great advice. Who was your favorite teacher at Syracuse? 
Um, did you did you know Rodney Hudson? I did. Rodney changed my life. Yeah, he changed my life too. He was he's a pretty pretty brilliant human being. Uh, I learned a lot from him. Uh, but but I loved the faculty at Syracuse. It's kind of the reason I went there. I was an acting major, but I wanted to have all the skills that I possibly could getting out of school to be as you know marketable as possible. So I worked a lot with um, Marie Kemp. I don't yeah. know if you knew Marie doing musical theater stuff. And um, I took all the dance classes. So I kind of was, was always staying busy. But yeah, Rodney by far was the best. Yes, my favorite quote of his that I wrote down in four years was acting is what happens between the lines. Love that. Absolutely. All right, well, this has been a fantastic, uh, very, very inspirational educational show. Uh, this has been Seth Green here with Robbie Simpson. Make sure you go check out the breakdown with Robbie um, and follow him on social. Robbie, thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Happy to connect with you, Seth. Our pleasure. Thanks everybody for watching or listening and we'll see you next time. Do you need money to fund your idea, product or service? Are you ready to take your business to the next level but need capital to get it done? Kevin Harrington has heard more than 50,000 pitches and knows how to help you make the perfect pitch to get the funding for your entrepreneurial dream. He's distilled the process down in his perfect pitch cheat sheet and it's yours for free. Just text PITCH to him right now at 727-888-2100. Text PITCH to 727-888-2100 right now and claim your free perfect pitch cheat sheet. Text PITCH to 727-888-2100 to start funding your dream today. This show has been produced by Market Domination, LLC. To discover how you can have your own show completely done for you and turn it into a real published book and become the authority in your marketplace, go to www.marketdominationllc.com slash podcast offer.